I think it's time. I think it's time we pay homage to our Indonesian car brothers. We certainly love our cars over here in Aussie land, but I think they are maybe equally as car crazy. Let's find out. G'day blokes, thanks for tuning in. Hey, I'm sure a few of you guys have uh, popped over to Bali, maybe gone to the Bounty Hotel, sipped on a few bintangs and uh, gone through the streets. Maybe you've even lost your wallet like I did when I went over there. Who knows, did I lose it or was it stolen? Whatever. So it was around 1960, it was in FC Holden. It was sent over as uh, nuts and bolts with a few panels. They set up a factory in Jakarta where a couple of the local blokes put it all together. They were basically uh, prestige cars. A lot of um, people in the military, a lot of government officials, they had a Holden. Now I'm sure there was some Ford's export as well. Not as popular, it was definitely the Holdens that were sent over. You might have seen a neighbor or two have a Holden and you wonder, what is that? Well, they would look over and they would uh, soon gain huge popularity. In fact, so much so, the HQ Kingswood can be found almost anywhere in Indonesia. Of course the 80s hit. You had uh, European and Japanese cars of a smaller variety. They came into vogue. These po poor old Holdens, and I'm sure a few Fords, they were sort of tossed to the side. Uh, if I have read correctly, some of it was used as a monster truck fodder, while others were sent to the scrap heap, which is a real shame. However, there was a small but loyal group of Indonesians and what they did was they tucked away a bit of precious iron in the back corner of their shed for one day they would rise again. So this small but uh, loyal group of people, they scrounged for parts. Because the problem with Indonesia is customs and shipping. To give you an example, the price of a part is approximately three times uh, that if you were to buy it in Indonesia, not to mention shipping alone. So they were doing whatever was necessary to keep these old beasts on the road. Whether it's painting on a dirt floor, chopping a four-door sedan, I'm talking about a HQ, into a two-door HQ Monaro, these guys did it all. Get yourself a piece of one mil cold rolled steel, a hammer and a dolly, a bit of imagination and some brains, and you're almost there. So I do watch with interest on Facebook. There's awesome Facebook pages which we'll link down below in the description. You've got to check it out. But these guys are fiercely, fiercely loyal to Australian cars. And we're proud to say they've, they've been our car brothers for a very long time. And it's time that we pay homage to them. I'm talking about cars like HQs, HR Holdens, EH, FCs, and the list continues. I have found Fords, XAs, XBs, and the list continues as well. So there are Commodores, but I believe the last car that was exported from Australia was the Gemini. And you gotta remember, these cars were used every single day. They were used as taxis, and they were dime a dozen. They were everywhere. When we manufactured things in Australia, it was phenomenal because we were able to showcase our own local products overseas. The weird thing about seeing your own cars overseas is that, yeah, you pretty much lose your shit when you see it. It could be an AU, it could be an XR8, could be a Holden Tirana. You never laid in a 308. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you see it overseas like I did when I went over to Bali uh, and other parts of Indonesia, when I saw HQ, I completely lost it. The thing wasn't mint. It wasn't Mickey Mouse. Yeah, there was a bit of weight reduction, you know, staged possibly two or three. But when I did see it, I thought, wow, how cool is this? And if that goes for seeing any Aussie cars overseas. So drop a comment below and tell me where you've seen an Aussie car around the world. Keeping these cars on the road has turned into a huge passion of these guys. From expensive parts, to swapping knowledge, exchanging ideas from mild to wild, 
custom and everything in between. I mean, these guys have really, really captured the essence of what car culture is all about. They make it their own. So if you do see a HQ that's got wild flames on it, oh yeah, or it's got a, a low rider sort of uh, pattern on it, you've got to give guys credit because there's creativity there and they've made it their own. You might not necessarily agree with the, with the window swoop and the C for a two-door Monaro, but you've got to give a guy credit for picking up the hammer and dolly and giving it a go. I think what they've done is they've created their own culture of keeping these cars alive. And I think that, um, you know, as Australians, we definitely need to stand by our Indonesian brothers. So I want to pay homage to you guys you guys have done a great job. Keep the uh, spirit alive of Australian cars since there's no more to be made. <laughs> I want you to know this feels really unnatural for me to do. It's difficult talking to a camera, but if you like this content or whatever, can you like, subscribe and comment? Most of all comment because we actually like looking at all your stuff and it sort of spurs us on a little bit. There's a new video coming soon. I've got some exciting things coming up for you guys. I think, if not, we'll make it up and try to make it as exciting as possible. But uh, yeah, visit our Facebook, give us a buzz, you know, check out our website, ozgeneralstore.com.au and, uh, you know, subscribe so you uh, get notified of all the cool and exciting things that we do. Thanks, guys.